Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news from Capitol Hill, where history has been made. We stand here today because the president's continuing abuse of his power has left us no choice. President Donald Trump now the fourth sitting president taken to the brink of impeachment. The framers of the Constitution prescribed a clear remedy for presidents who so violate their oath of office. That is the power of impeachment. We do not take this action lightly, but we have taken an oath to defend the Constitution. The president formally charged with abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. The president's oath of office appears to mean very little to him, but the articles put forward today will give us a chance to show that we will defend the Constitution and that our oath means something to us. And that tops our news this noon. Good afternoon. The charges stem from Trump's pressure on Ukraine to announce investigations of his political rivals as he withheld aid to the country. Susan McGinnis breaks it all down from Washington, D.C. For only the fourth time in U.S. history, the House of Representatives proceeds with formal articles of impeachment against a sitting president. We must be clear, no one, not even the president, is above the law. After months of testimony from dozens of witnesses, Democrats concluding when the president pressured Ukraine to dig up dirt on rival Joe Biden while holding millions in aid captive, he abused the power of his office. Investigators also finding he obstructed Congress in blocking requested documents and instructing White House staff to defy congressional subpoenas to appear. If allowed to stand, it would decimate Congress's ability to conduct oversight of this president or any other in the future. You, you made a ruling on the point of order. Yeah, you made a ruling on the, the bitter order. partisan divide on full display at Monday's House Judiciary Committee hearing. Republicans decrying the process as a baseless sham. We all should be alarmed at how they've abused their power with this majority in Congress. The articles announced the same day President Trump meets with Russia's foreign minister. President tweeting witch hunt and repeating his claim that Ukraine's president said there was no pressure. The Judiciary Committee will likely vote on the articles Thursday, setting the stage for a vote by the full House next week. The White House says it's already preparing for a Senate trial and plans to participate. Expect more of the president's reaction at a rally tonight in Hershey, Pennsylvania. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. All right, thank you, Susan. We do have breaking news from Washington, where Democratic leaders in Congress have announced a deal with the Trump administration on a new trade deal with Mexico and Canada. Now, the deal revises the administration's earlier announced trade deal. Democrats worked with labor unions to get their support for changes. The new deal, which reportedly has the support of both Canada and Mexico, will add stronger enforcement measures. President Trump voiced his support for the new deal, saying it is great for everybody. Also in Washington, D.C. today, two security guards are injured after an incident at a church. Police say a man hit one of those guards with his car. Then he stabbed a second guard inside the church. The man then took off, barricaded himself inside a home. After a short standoff, he gave up and was arrested. We're told both guards will be okay. Also breaking, but closer to home. A one-year-old boy is killed in this crash on eastbound I-94 at Martin Road in St. Clair Shores. Now you're looking at video of the scene. Right now, investigators are working to learn exactly what led to that accident. So we're going to bring in Larry Spruill. He's been working this story. What have you found out, Larry? Well, Karen, we do know that police did confirm that one-year-old boy did die, but he was also restrained in a child seat in the back of that car at the time of the accident. Now, that crash happened here on Interstate 94 earlier this morning, and they just cleared about 45 minutes ago. Now, we just spoke with neighbors and witnesses. They tell us this is a sad crash. It breaks my heart. What a Christmas for those poor people. The reality of what happened just feet away from Pat Pilzak's home Tuesday is settling in. Pat says she heard a loud crash early Tuesday morning near Interstate 94, and she had to see what happened. Within minutes, she saw two cars and debris, including kids' toys, all over the road. It's so sad. Oh, dear. I wish I wouldn't have come over to look at it. Michigan State Police confirmed the terrible news. This white van crashed into the back of what's left of this Ford Fusion with a one-year-old boy 
inside. It appears that the, the driver of the van was, uh, from according to witnesses, was driving a little too fast, was changing lanes to um, out the traffic pattern, changed into the left lane and rear-ended the passenger car, a Ford uh, four-door. Uh, the mother was not restrained. However, she only received uh, some very minor injuries. She's currently in one of the local hospitals. Um, unfortunately, the one-year-old child was restrained and the car seat was killed in the crash. Uh, the male driver of the van was also transported to a local hospital with some minor injuries. And Lieutenant Shaw with MSP tells us that that male driver who, who was driving that van, they plan on arresting him later on today and they will charge him with charges later on. Meanwhile, they are not releasing the name of the mother or that little boy who died in the crash at this time. We're live along Interstate 94 this afternoon. Larry Sproul. Local four. Such a heartbreaking story. All right. Thank you, Larry. We do have some breaking news on this Tuesday from the entertainment world where singer Marie Fredrickson, half of the rock duo known as Roxette, has died in her native Sweden. Roxette had a number of hits back in the 80s and 90s. She underwent successful treatment for brain tumor that was diagnosed back in 2002, but died today after a lengthy illness. Marie Fredrickson was just 61 years old. We're also following breaking news from Europe where a shooting has taken place in the Czech Republic. A man opened fire in a hospital waiting room near the border with Poland. He killed six people, wounded two. All the victims were hospital patients. He did escape but was found later in a car dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police say the gunman had earlier been a hospital patient. His motive is still unclear. Turning our attention to the forecast, some of us saw some snow this morning, but the bigger weather story is the temperature. Oh, Brandon, you said we were going to take a dip, and you were right. Well, it's a pretty significant dip when you factor in the wind chill. Right now, air temperatures, Karen, are middle upper 20s to lower 30s. We don't want you to ignore that, but you really have to pay attention to the wind chill. We have winds out of the west pretty much 10 to 20, occasionally gusting still to 25, but it knocks those wind chills into the teens and low 20s tomorrow, single digits and teens. So that's a good 40 degree drop from what we saw with Monday's 50s. Temperatures will continue to drop and wind chills will as well because the winds really aren't going to relax much. We get a couple of flakes and flurries, maybe an isolated snow shower from Lake Michigan, but you can see right now we're just mainly dealing with some pockets of very light snow. Even colder stuff to come, Karen, coming up. Thank you, Brad. And today, the man responsible for running over a sheriff's deputy, Eric Overall, will learn his fate. The incident happened Thanksgiving morning back in 2017. Christopher Barack was trying to get away from police when he struck and then killed Deputy Overall. Last month, the jury found him guilty of Overall's death. Brock is expected to be sentenced later this afternoon. Also developing, rescue helicopters find no signs of life on New Zealand's White Island following a volcano eruption that left at least six people dead and dozens injured. Monday's blast has prompted calls for an investigation into the safety of tourism at New Zealand's most active volcano. Still to come this noon, a Massachusetts church uses its nativity scene to make a political statement. I think we have to kind of gather people's awareness to bring about a change of mind and heart. But the display is not without controversy. Why some people are not happy about the politicization of the nativity scene. But first, a bombshell 435 page report dropped by the Justice Department clears up some confusion about the origins of the Russia investigation launched into the Trump campaign. But some are not happy with its findings. How President Trump is reacting this noon to the report. 